before I do the clapper, you have to appreciate the shamrock. Yes, you're all turn a little bit to the left because this one. There you go. That one was in too much shadow. So you can see all the much better. Look at that. Much yeah. better. Yeah. So you could make a necklace. You could, but <laughs> you probably won't. Let's be honest. Okay, fine. Clap that Back thing. to business. Here we go and action. St. Patrick's Day, green and. As I say in my part of the, when I'm filming, sometimes you need inspiration from wherever. <laughs> it's such a weirdo inspiration. Maybe you don't know what you want to do today. And so you take your cues from the calendar, what you see outside your window. And that's what we did. We decided since we don't ordinarily work with just a color, we decided to do that today for St. Patrick's Day, which and you'll see this video on the 15th of March and St. Patrick's Day is two days later. So we will be in the spirit. We will get you in the spirit a couple of days early. Yeah. Yeah. My head is getting cut off. It's because I'm short. Yeah. And the camera's angled really down low. Let's yes, just keep is. going with well, it though. Let's, let's go. I with tried that and it didn't stay. There's my big finger in the way. Oh, it's a little it's better, a little but better. my we head is still getting cut off. We can see your off. fabulous hat. That's true. Okay, fine. All right. So she did green, um, and interestingly enough, she's cut some shamrocks out, which is kind of fun, and she'll tell you why that is as she goes through her, bar, her part. Um, but ultimately, she's got a piece that we're waiting for the adhesive to dry, and she's gonna foil that will be good for all kinds of green stuff, foliage and grass and, and shrubbery and all that stuff. Yeah, I would use this paper for collage, but I just, because of St. Patrick's Day, I made it into shamrocks and uh, I wanted to share the MDA fundraiser with you. And in case you're curious, because Barb said, you didn't say why you were promoting the MDA fundraiser. So my family has a muscular dystrophy. Um, my grandfather had it and my father had it and my aunts had it and many generations had it. It's a hereditary and uh so it's uh close to my heart yes it is my heart's over here right no, it's on the left oh you okay it's on the other weirdo. side it's close to my heart <laughs> yeah i pledge allegiance yeah, jeez yeah, louise yeah. anyway she's adorable i love her yeah so anyway that's the tie-in the connection the family connection with the muscular dystrophy so so yeah that's all okay and I just played with green. Uh, I did, I used green. I used a couple of Art Alchemy paints to make kind of a shimmery background. So if you want to work with a color, it doesn't necessarily have to be thematic, although that can be the impetus, the place where you, you start from. And sometimes it's fun, you know, you just pick a thing and that's what you decide to do. Most of the time when I go in the studio, it's like, yeah, whatever, I'm just gonna go in and play with this thing. But we deliberately went into this today knowing that we wanted to work with green. So that was kind of a fun change. It was kind of a fun change. And we started with green, that was that was the thing, but we didn't know what we were gonna do. So we, we, no we kind of worked backwards, but yeah, it, it worked. worked out good. Yeah, so, so go. anyway, luck of the Irish, what is it? May the road rise up to meet you and all? Something like that. I'm yeah. only a little bit Irish, so. I, I, I'm like mostly Irish. Do you believe that? I'm like 80% Irish with the name St. Hilaire. Um, I got nothing to say about that. <laughs> well, all right then. All right, let's let's go. go. Action. Just clap again. You were a tick ahead of me. There you go. <laughs> okay. I have no idea what I'm doing. Well, that's not true. I have some sort of an idea of what I'm doing, but I'm feeling spontaneous. So. Here we're working on our 9 by 12 Yasutomo sketch rice paper pad. I love this paper on the gel plate and I am gel printing today. So I'm gonna take a sheet of that or two out. It is smooth on one side and rough on the other side. The smooth side is facing up towards you in the pad and that is the side that you want to place down on the gel plate. It, there is no, not gonna be any issue or problem if you print on the rough side. It's just that the smooth side tends to pull a better print. And even when you take this paper out of the pad, you will still know which side is the smooth side because you can feel it. You can feel the difference, okay? So we're gonna reserve one of those as a cleanup sheet and one for what we're doing. So because we are celebrating St. Patrick's Day, I decided to print in green. And I also decided to give you a little color mixing lesson because sometimes we talk about having all 400 million tubes of paint. 
you know, every green known to man. And sometimes people don't have all those colors. So I'm gonna show you how to do at least three layers or three values or more of green using only two greens and my all time favorite Van Dyke Brown. I love to darken all colors with Van Dyke Brown. And let's see, this color is yellowish green. This color is permanent green deep. And then we have Dick Van Dyke Brown. So, <laughs> so we're just going to say that you have two greens, one that's lighter than and darker than the other, but you got to have the Dick Van Dyke Brown. So is it only Van Dyke Brown that you're going to use to darken, or is there another substitute in case anybody that doesn't have Van Dyke Brown? There's no substitute. Okay. Van Dyke All Brown the other is... browns, that's a good question. All the other browns that I ha see are, they're warmer brown. They have yellow in them, so they're like a golden brown, and they don't do a good job of darkening because they're, in essence, they're adding yellow to certain colors, and it doesn't work. That wouldn't be so bad with green, but if you try to darken blue with a brown that has yellow in it, then, you know, it gets a little mucky. Okay. So what's cool about Van Dyke Brown is it is a, well, it's a cool brown um, and it's like a neutral brown. So it's, it doesn't have any of those warm, you know, chestnut kind of brownie. Okay. Um, where's an example of that? Oh, now you got me on a tangent. Yeah. So here's the difference. Like here's another brown. That's brown too, but it's got, you can see it's got a lot of yellow in it. And then there's darker versions of this, but they're not really like this cool brown. Okay. This is a real nice neutral brown. So lesson learned. Good question. Yeah. So invest yourself, um, treat yourself to some Dick Van Dyke Brown. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use this yellowish green, which is the lightest green that you have. It doesn't have to be this particular green, but let's say this is the lightest green that you have. Now you don't want to try to lighten green with white because if you add white to any color, it becomes pastel. It would just make us have mint green, you know, like those mints you get at the wedding barb. Those are the ones. The yes. butter mints. It would yeah. be like that. And we don't want that. So if you want to lighten your green, if it's not light enough, you add some yellow. But don't add white. Okay? But this is pretty nice and light green. This yellowish green. That's a very descriptive color name. You could end up with a Jordan almond if you're going to do the wedding thing, right? Yeah. So those are even better with the almonds in the middle. Mm, it's like Easter. Easter's coming. Carry on, sister. Okay. Smooth side down, taking the Baron, my new favorite tool, to rub this. And you know, I've been doing a lot of gel printing lately, and I'm going to tell you something. You know how when you use your hands to rub, you end up with that crust around the edge of the plate after printing the paint buildup that never really comes off? It's because we don't get real good pressure out of the edges. This is the solution to that. You get good pressure out around the edges, and you don't get that giant crusty buildup on your plate. It's rather amazing. So I make sure I go around all the corners and I get a lot of solid pressure on the edges, way better than I could do with my hands. And then you can see, I, there's nothing gonna build up on here. Now, this is messy because the plate's kind of dirty. That's okay. Actually, that's fantastic. Perfection is highly overrated. Well, this is why we like gel printing because we get all this stuff that comes up from previous prints. Mm -hmm. So this is our lightest green. So I'm gonna go a little dar darker now, and I only have these two greens. So my next one, I'm gonna do the same one, the same light green that I already have, and then the medium green a little bit that you have, whatever medium green you have. So now we're gonna blend something that's lighter than that medium green. When you're blending, you wanna stir with the brayer on the plate, stir it all around to make sure it's blended and then roll it out. If you just roll it out, you get sort of a marbled effect and it's not really mixed. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but I want this to be mixed. So I'm stirring and then rolling and then spreading it out. And then I've got a green that is still quite a bit darker than this. And I really wanted it not to be that much darker. So I'm gonna squeeze out all we have left, Barb, of this yellowish green. Yeah, we gotta see if there's another tube in that giant mess over there and lighten this up a little it's bit. It's definitely lighter. It's definitely lighter. It's a bigger jump than I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be just a little darker, but... Oh, well. We're still doing okay. So the, the, the lesson in that is that a light color is very easily overpowered by something darker, so I didn't need to add so much medium green to it because that medium green is a lot stronger than the yellow green. Okay, so applying pressure out on the corners and the edges to prevent that paint buildup. 
And then before you dismount the paper, I like to take a peek and I realize that there's not good connection there. There's not good contact there. So I gotta apply some more pressure so I can get a better print. Also, um, while you're gel printing and you're making your green papers, you're gonna get the hang of how much of this and how much of that you need. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm, when I gel print green papers, I don't just make one. So then you get the hang of it. That looks nice. So that's Planet Peacock, right? That's This is my Planet Peacock stencil. And now it's a little bit uh, darker. It's not as big of a jump as I thought it was going to be. So slightly darker. So now I'm going to lift this off. I'm not going to do anything with that ghost print. I'm going to add some more medium green to it. So this time I'm going right to the medium green, no light. So this will be one level darker. Now there was light green in my brayer and light green on the ghost print. So that's going to lighten that up just a little bit because my brayer was still wet. So this is actually a lighter than what come out of the tube. And I'm gonna use the same Planet Peacock again, and I'm gonna put this over itself for my second layer. And before you dismount the paper, check out your print. I think that looks good. There's some more paint in there. I'm gonna flip it over and print it over itself again. The reason why I flip it over is so the pattern doesn't line up. So this way I have flipped it so my pattern's going the opposite direction. So I get more complex layering that way. So now we're starting to get a nice couple of layers. And again, I'm gonna let, lift this up and I'm gonna put a little bit more of that medium green. And now I'm gonna bring in Dick Van Dyke. Dick Van Dyke. And again, Dick Van Dyke is a very strong color. So we just need a little and we've still got a wet green on the plate, wet green in the brayer, a little bit of green there. We're gonna stir and roll it out. And you see how that makes that green dark, but not change the color it's really? Funny. It's not muddy. No, it's a nice neutral dark. Okay, so now we're gonna put Planet Peacock on there again. This way and again. So this is what, the third layer, right? I think that's right. It's a third layer. So we had light. No, this is the fourth. We had light. We had light mixed with medium. Then oh, we had right. then we had medium. Then we have medium with this. So this is the fourth. And the reason why I want to count these layers is because the successful gel prints are multiple layers, not just one or two. The key is layering. Okay, so now we can get a better impression on that. That's better. Always take a peek before you pull the paper off because look at that. Now we're getting somewhere. Now I'm gonna do one last layer, Barb. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm, I think that's pretty dark. Dark enough. Okay. So now I'm gonna print that ghost print over itself. So this is my, are you keeping count of the layers? This is five, right? This is five, something like that. So now I print that right over itself. And now look at this nice, rich, highly textured pattern, beautiful green. Now this paper I can use for grass, for greenery, in collage. I would use this for trees or greenery or grass or all kinds of different things. But I like the fact that it's got the patterns and a little bit of light and a little bit of dark medium. So... Now, as if that wasn't amazing enough, we're gonna- <laughs> But wait, there's more. There's more. So we're gonna take this out of the way and that's still wet. Well, well okay, so- We can well, just pretend like you did it. Or you yeah, so what like I'm gonna do is taking this Dorothy stencil. Do you remember what this is called? Oh, I think it's Dressy Dorothy. Dressy Dorothy. This is from the Polka Dot Dorothy Dot series. It's a, a series of uh, little dots in sort of in lines. So how we're gonna do this is we're gonna use the Tacky When Dry Gel Medium <laughs> and a palette knife. And I'm not gonna do it because this is wet. Eh, it's not that wet. Let's just do it, Barb. Right, Let's just throw caution to the wind. Ooh, there it goes, it's out the window. It's a little wet, but it's okay. Uh, so now this is a nice gel, thick, heavy gel. So it holds the pattern when you press it through the, when you scrape it through the stencil really, really well because it is thick gel medium. But what happens, with, what makes this different and what happens when this dries is it dries tacky. Hence the name, tacky when dry gel medium with a lowercase w. We won't go there. I think you just did. <laughs> 
Oh, spread this stuff, sister. Okay. So we this spreads out and is going to hold the shape. And so what we're doing now is we're putting tacky polka dots. Tacky Dorothy. That could be a new stencil, Tacky Dorothy. Tacky Dorothy. That's just Tacky Dorothy. So we're going to spread that through here, cover the whole sheet. And it's nice because you can see where you miss because this is sort of opaque right now. So you can see you want to have white through there. We won't make you watch me do this whole thing. Buttering. It's like frosting a cake. That's right. Okay. Without the calories. Yes. Now, when you pull this up, you're going to see those polka dots all through the stencil of the Tacky Wind Dry Gel Medium. And while that looks really cool. That, yeah, it does. And it's a cool pattern. And so you're just going to set this aside and let this dry. And you'll know when it's dry because it will be clear. So bringing in a previous print, it is clear and it is tacky to the touch. So it's all dried on top of my previous print. And now, da, 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 in the interest of excitement in St. Patrick's Day, I've got Gina K Fancy Foils and Deco Foil. And these are the transfer sheets. I've got glittering green and green sketch. I really love this one because it's got uh, like striations and uh, scratchy lines in it. And then this one has some like holographic circles. I think there's stars on there too. I think that's part of the- Oh yeah, stars. glittery stars. Well, I like stars, so let's use that. So these are the, sh the transfer sheets. And I always mess this up, Barb, so help me out. So I do it this down. way down, right? Yep. Yep. Okay, you so see what you're gonna you want to see what you're going to get, unlike the regular other foil. Yeah, okay, leafing. leafing. So we're going to put that one there, and I'm going to use this one. Use this one on the other side? Sure. Go for it. I particularly like the scratchy lines in this one. And it's a slightly bigger sheet. So we're gonna lay that over our Tacky Wind Dry Gel Medium. Now you can rub this with a wooden spoon or the fronts of your fingernails, but again, our trusty brayer, I mean, barren, all things that begin with a B. That's right. This really applies pressure. And sometimes I'll use it on the edge corner of itself to really get good pressure on here. But this is a lot easier than using your fingernails. And then, oh my God, look at that. And if it's not, you know, it's possible that there's a little bit in here that's not completely dry. Okay, look at that, wow. So pretty. So, so pretty. Glittery. So again, this would be paper that I could use, even in some instances, water would be green, but I would use this in vegetation, greenery. Okay. So look at that. Now we got the beautiful sparkle. Boy, that transferred amazingly well, didn't yeah, it? it did. And all those layers of peacock, planet peacock, and the greens, and the Van Dyke brown. And lastly, I need to find a pair of scissors. Okay, I've got the scissors. So what I did was I adhered some shamrock shapes to the back. So I will, I will use the waste of this for my collage paper, but today I am wanting to create shamrocks. So I traced them on tracing paper and then glue sticked them down so I could have a few that were all the same size. Now you, I'm creating shamrocks. So you could use these for cards. You could string them together and make a garland for your St. Patrick's Day New England boiled dinner. Oh, we always had that every single year. And we could make a garland of shamrocks or like I said, we could make a card or if we were having everybody over for dinner, we could make table place cards. The fun stuff. Look oh, at that. How cute that is. That is amazing. Look at that. Yep. I mean, like I said, it, w it will make great collage paper, the leftovers, but this is really pretty cool. I'd have to cut an out another one so you can see it. I just can't help myself. I can't help myself. It's so cute. 
So while I'm cutting this, I want to share with you that the reason why I am excited about these shamrocks is that St. Patrick's Day for over 40 years, the Muscular Dystrophy Association has been doing their largest fundraiser, which is the shamrock pinup. So you can buy a shamrock, make a donation to MDA at your local retailer, and you can write the name of a loved one or yourself or someone you want to remember on the shamrock. And most of the time they pin them up to the wall and you can see all the money that they're raising for the Muscular Dystrophy Association. So I think that I read that in, in the past 40 years, the, the shamrock pinup fund drive has raised over 360 something million dollars for the Muscular Dystrophy Association. And that money goes towards research, for the nine different types of muscular dystrophy, and it also goes towards sending kids with muscular dystrophy to summer camp. So the Shamrock, if you have a pinup MDA fundraiser opportunity in your neighborhood, I would love for you to donate even a dollar um, or make your own in memory or honor of someone special. So that's my St. Patrick's Day green lesson, Barb. There you go. For me, St. Patrick's Day is green, obviously, and rather than a card, which we've done some as we've been playing around here the last few days, I'm gonna stick with a journal page. And I have one of this, this is the, um, oh, good grief. This is the Vicky P journal. This is the one with the really heavy pages and I don't have the thingy on the front of it anymore, but you know, I'll make that available. The spread on this is a little bit bigger than an eight by 10 plate. And one of the things that I like is that you can do this. So you get this really cool, kind of framed effect and I eyeball it. If it's exactly centered, so be it. If it's not, oh well, whoops, maybe better next time. So I like to print across full pages like that. And again, in honor of St. Patrick's Day, I'm going to use a couple of colors of green. So these are, I guess it would help if I put my glasses on. These are Art Alchemy paints. This one is named, oh yeah, it's, it's Fairy Wings. And this one is named Green Goblin. So we've got sparkly greens, two different shades. We've got some strong contrast there. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab some paper towel because I'm sure I'm gonna need it. And I'm gonna put a little bit out and just blend it with the brayer to kind of get an ombre. Well, not to kind of get an ombre, to get an ombre. We'll knock things over because we can. Obviously, if I put more of one color out than the other, I'm going to end up with that as the stronger of the two colors. This is you know, probably going to be a little bit darker than lighter, but that's all right. So blend. That's all you really have to do. I'm going to take this journal and I'm going to eyeball it and put it face down. The thing that I forget to do sometimes is you really have to press in this center area so that you print right into the crease where the signatures are. And sometimes you get a bigger wide spot, uh, big deal, it just is. I'm not gonna sweat that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up. And that printed pretty close into the seam, so I'm good with that. Now, with that said, there is enough paint on here to do this again, but uh, this is still damp and I don't wanna close that up. So I'm just gonna slide the plate out of the way. Elizabeth mm -hmm. used the Tacky Wind Dry Gel Medium, which is what this is. And I grabbed the DecoFoil um, liquid adhesive. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. They both dry sticky. This one, because it's a thicker bodied product, if you spread it on thick, it's liable to, it is more liable to stay and you'll hold on to, shall we do that? You'll hold on to the shape, whatever it is that you produce. And if it's a thick layer and it's tall, then it will hold it because of the fact that it's a gel. So I use this. I wasn't too worried about that one way or the other. And I'm gonna use the same two colors of foil. And in fact, I'm gonna use the same two sheets of foil that Elizabeth did, primarily because I want you to see that even though, like on this one, a lot of this is gone, that doesn't mean you can't use it. It just means you might have to pick it up. And you know what, you asked me if I was gonna use the Baron. I said, no, I'm not gonna use the Baron. Yeah. So you just pick it up and this is Elizabeth's and I don't have it in front of me. It's one of her patterns for layering that's named Mesh Mask. But the point of this is that just because a bunch of this is gone doesn't mean you can't use it. And so same thing here. And I've spread this over both sides. This has got a little bit more available here, so quicker and easier. But 
the Baron really does make it easier to get even pressure, and it's important that you get pressure on here. So this is small designs, and you don't see the pattern quite so much, and ultimately these look very similar. But if I had chosen a stencil with larger openings, then I would see more of the scratchy pattern or the stars that are on that other one. But this is it. I mean, you can create interesting backgrounds that can be thematic, whether you're talking about a holiday or you're talking about somebody likes blue or, the, you know, there's just, take your cues from whatever's around you, whether it's the calendar or it's the color you see outside your window. Sometimes you need a little boost to think about which direction you're going in and those kind of things are helpful. Okay, right. so thank you for indulging us in our green festivities. Yes, we and, are green uh, with envy. Yes, we're green with envy. That's cute. <laughs> and That's I, your idea. Yes. I didn't know how we were going to tie the envy, except for that we all know Barb's envious of my shamrock necklace. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe they could be pins. But anyway, um, yeah, so thanks. And um, happy St. Pat's and uh, all and, that good stuff. And who has more fun than us? Nobody. Barely anyone. I know, right? Yes. All right. Okay. We'll see you, see next, you time. next time. Bye.